There comes a point in time when all businesses compete for the same thing, sameness. Of course it shouldn't be this way because competing to be the best at what every, everyone else does leads to mediocrity. On today's episode, we, escape, we, we discuss how to escape mediocrity, not mindlessly pursue it. I'm Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. And I'm Adrian. So this is our, our topic for today. And um, the, reason, the reason we're touching upon this, this topic has nothing to do with the future. But <laughs> it has to do with my future. It could, it could, <laughs> well, it has to do with, with how to begin to create a future, right? And we were discussing this for the past two weeks, I, I think, behind, be, before we, we started any other podcast, we have, because you have a, an ongoing challenge at, at this point. You were asking me questions about it. And it, it, it pretty much has to do with this topic. Um, so when we talk about being different, we are talking about commitment to innovation <laughs> and in terms of what you were saying is is you know you know different from me you don't have a you know an audience online audience right and you were asking me questions about you know how to you know how to start an audience how to position yourself all that type of stuff and you know I, I was kind of you know throwing you ideas as to how I've done it myself so one way to be different or how the differentiation begins is by having a purpose. That's how it starts. So anything you do has to be focused on, on achieving that purpose. So you were saying, well, I like doing, I like doing movies. So how do I position, my, position myself as a director, you know, online? I actually asked you, I've been thinking about this and what makes me different than yeah. all the other directors on Twitter? Yeah. That was like more of the question. Yeah. And I, I didn't have an answer. I didn't, I mean, I, I told you what I liked. That I liked lighting and I hated bad lighting and bad dialogue. Yeah. So in, in my response to that was, well, because I asked you and I, and I pointed out that to, to find your purpose or to find your angle of, of to you know to to create differentiation is I asked you know what what do you think sucks <laughs> mm -hmm. in 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 the in the grand scheme of things of cinema right and you said lighting that you don't like the fucking lighting yeah and I said well then you know then start talking about that <laughs> you know make it a point of always pointing out you know why lighting sucks in this so and so movie you know to begin begin you know creating that dialogue where you are focusing just on that topic, right? So that's a way, because that's, that's innate. You, you, you don't have to get motivated to talk, you know, to, to begin thinking about the lighting. You just, fuck, you know, you just, you just do it. <laughs> yeah. It's innate for you. It's something that you, you pick up on, right? And, and that's one way. Um, other ways, you know, you know, taking that point, that point further is, um, it's, you, have to, you have to take over that topic. So in essence, you've become the topic, and ways to do that is um, there's a strategy called or, or a strategy I use. It's called uh, thin ice. So basically, it's like like an analogy. You make your patch of ice, but whoever comes to your patch of ice, they're standing on thin ice because they don't have arguments. So the question is, what arguments can you win <laughs> by 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 talking about that topic? So that's something I deliberately do. You know, so anytime I'm talking about, you know, so-and-so or whatever, um, I know for a fact that I am challenging other people to come and uh, either agree with me or disagree with me <laughs> on whatever the hell, the hell I, am, I, am, I am trying to say or, you know, trying to implement, <laughs> right? But that's my game. So, you know, so the, the point is, the point here is that to try to compete with somebody head on is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is not the, the game you should be playing because you're trying to play another game that's not the one you can win. Yeah. But before you can win a game, you have to really, really have understanding of what's the arguments that you are making that only you can win. And that's how it is. And those arguments have to matter. So they have to be, um, you know, because you were, you were saying before we jumped on that, 
Is it just being a rebel? Is it just being a rebel enough? And I said, well, no, because I mean, anybody could be a rebel. Anybody can, you know, jump jump to the street and run naked. But you know, <laughs> hours later, nobody's gonna give a shit. <laughs> just some random dude running, you know, running naked, right? But if if you give it a reason as to why I'm running naked. You know everything's gonna change. I mean, that, and that's and doing that is really really difficult because it's not it's not that easy to, you know, to 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 plant in some an idea in somebody's head with with an action and say this is why you should care <laughs> about what I'm talking about. But you know when you find it, it becomes very powerful because it, because then it gets associated with you. <laughs> you know, um, you know for example, um, one way that you know, in the fashion world, they use this is the the Levitin boots, the Levitin shoes. You know, Christian Levitin is a big, well-known designer, and the reason people know when somebody's wearing a Levitin shoe, Levitin in terms of the the women, the girls, is because the 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 bottom of the foot is red. <laughs> mm, okay. All right. So when you see a sh a girl wearing a shoe with the with the bottom of the shoe, it's red. That's a Levitin shoe. Now it might not be because of of you know copycats, but if you look at the, the the thing, you pay attention, and you you will burst in how those things look. You will you will for sure it's a level team one. And if you see the the girl you know with a big fucking smile on her face and really looking at that stuff and looking at her shoes and all that stuff, you bet it's a level team shoe. Because this is this is yeah, and that's that you know he 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 became associated with that idea. <laughs> Just by doing that. With that red soul. Yeah, he's a craftsman, but you know, that's an easy idea to, for people to pick on, yeah. right? Um, and that's an argument he can win. <laughs> I make the finest fucking shoes, <laughs> and he does. I mean, he really does. I mean, he's really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's you know, that that's not, you know, these are not examples of innovation, <laughs> but they are examples of. Of standing com out. Uh, communicating an innovation, yeah. <laughs> and that's that's really the where where the rubber meets the road. So anytime we're talking about an idea, I mean, we can talk about the idea all the time, or, you know, anytime you want. But at the end of the day, you got to put that out there, right? And a lot of people will or do not have the guts to do that because it's not only just about putting the idea out there. You have to be able to pers you to, you know to, to persuade people to give a shit. <laughs> and that's and that's and that's really difficult, especially when you're doing something really new. <laughs> not not everyone's gonna get it. So in terms of Labotin, he found an angle to make people care, <laughs> and then to 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 plant an idea in people's head as the color red. You think of red in, in terms of that domain, and it's Labotin. So when you're like like green, you think about Starbucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so there are strategies to stand out. The other strategy is. Um, polarization so you have to be able to polarize people <laughs> what do I mean by that is you have to be you have to be able to tell the truth and not and not not be fearful that people will not give a shit <laughs> right so for example I use that a lot I put I, I, I pick fights you tell the truth. I pick fights, yes. So one example is one one that's going on right now with my Twitter. Um, I, on, on Friday, I published a post called Innovation is Not a Job. The reason I published on a Friday, I usually do not publish on a Friday, is because on that Friday and that morning, I picked up in, on an article from, from Harvard Business Review that said, uh, innovation is everybody's job. So I had a counterpoint. It's a polarizing argument. Because that supposedly I'm not supposed to say that, <laughs> you know, supposedly, right? So what happens? I just, the last I shared it has almost 300 shares. <laughs> that's the last I, sh I, 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 and that's just from my blog because I always publish in other places. And I don't know the other places how's it going, but you know what I mean? Yeah. That's almost 300 shares in three days on a fucking Friday. <laughs> People on Friday are not, you know, hooked up to goddamn social media. Um, the argument that I made, it has to do with, you know, it's not about, you know, pointing an idea in people's heads that they're innovators if they don't have the fucking skills and if they don't have the mindset. <laughs> it sounds like a great idea, but humans, humans do not react to that type of stuff. 
right? I know a lot of people who, who want to be innovators, but... But they're not. They don't have it. Yeah, them. they don't have it. Maybe I mean, if they... I don't every, know. I mean, look at the topic we're talking about right now. I mean, everybody's, everybody's happy with good enough. <laughs> everybody's... Who, you know, okayness is the enemy of greatness. That's, that's, that's one of my sayings. <laughs> right? If you're okay with how things are, you don't have the mindset or the motivation to change them. And in terms of what we do, we want to change everything. Because every, we're pissed off pretty much anything that we encounter. If we really yeah. sit down and nitpick you know, where we are and all that stuff, we'll find shit to say. <laughs> we don't even have to get motivated. We don't even have, need to drink or smoke or anything. We don't need anything. We just go at it, right? <laughs> I, I don't know when this happened, started happening to me, but yeah, pretty much everywhere I go, I see all the bad things in the place. And I yeah. automatically think, how can I make them better? And it's, it's just, I don't know, it's automatic for me. But it, it, like five years ago, it didn't happen that way. I don't know yeah. what happened. It just suddenly did. You know, and there's, there's, there's the angles where there's only so much that you can do to make it different. Um, you were talking about, you know, before we jumped on, what was the, the thing we were talking about where we were talking about, you know, the, the experience? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, the, 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 the oh. barbershop. Yeah, yeah. So the barbershop, uh, but I think I mentioned this in a previous podcast that I that had gone to a you know a, a barbershop that I normally don't go to, and I didn't like how they cut my hair and and I was pissed and it just ran off and whatever. Right, I was really fucking pissed. So the reason I said that is because the, I I thought that the the guy or the, the the girl that was cutting my hair she didn't give a shit about how her job, just a bad attitude, right? It was just oh just sit down and you know get the fuck out of here. And, you know, usually where I go and cut my hair, it's different. Number one, because they know me. And number two, because they actually know how to cut their hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They, I don't know if they, if they have a point to say or to, to, to make it that they get why people go and cut their hair. is because they want to look good. And they take pride in, you know, in, in keeping that promise. Or simply because they just bit good, good at cutting hair. I mean, I don't really know. But... The point is that anytime I go and cut my hair to where I usually go, you know, I know exactly how I'm going to feel. <laughs> and I like that feeling of feeling fresh. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But here's the thing. Those guys have been in business for, uh, I, don't know, I, I mean, I've been going with, to them since I was like five or six. So that's like, shit, like 20 some years. <laughs> 20 some. <laughs> yeah, like almost 30 years. That's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway. But here's the thing, they've been at the same location, they're pretty much using the same seats, the same old school methods. And if I really sit down and think about things that they could do better, we could come with, up with conclusions. And one of them has to do with the experience. And I told you this example of about five years ago, one of the guys there, you know, he, he, he literally turned a, a, a clipper into a massage tool. Where he put inside his hand or kind of lodged into his hands in some way, like in a glove. And then he starts massaging, you know, putting his arm around, his, his hands around you, and literally you start feeling like he's massaging you, especially in the head. I remember that day because I even posted a blog about it. To me, that was like, goddamn, this is interesting, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, it doesn't change the way they cut my hair, but it changes the way I feel about going there in my state. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my god, I didn't really need a massage. But it was okay. I mean, everybody likes massage, yeah. <laughs> especially in the middle of the day. Right? Yeah, that happened to me too, and I really enjoyed it. And I, I, I think it was a, another place. I don't know. I mean, I, I only know one guy that did that. So it, I kind of find it hard that it wasn't the same guy. But yeah, it's, 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 my dad took me there. He was like, oh, this guy that put something on his hand and he massages your head and mm. blah, blah, blah. You got to try it. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll go and... He used to cut my hair before. I don't know. He, he And I enjoyed it. It was, it was a great experience. Yeah. Well, see, there's the thing, because they didn't change anything. Just change one component of the whole thing and made you think about it differently, right? Yeah. They're not innovating. I mean, they're innovating the experience. But it, that, doesn't that have to do with what we were talking about a few minutes ago, that uh, I told you about the, the sodas in the restaurants? Yeah. That they, they tell you the, the can, overpriced can. And you told me, yeah, but if, if they do the the, yeah. the free rifle thing, it's going to be like, oh, wow, these guys are innovating. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a chalk. And 
maybe it, it, it was like the same thing with the, the barber shop. Maybe that was yeah. their reaction. It's, oh, they're doing something extra that they don't know. Well, see, do. there's a thing because it matters in, in the thing that you're doing. Because if they change the seats and it didn't, you know, you know, it didn't make really a difference in my stay. I mean, a seat can only do so much. It'd be just like, <laughs> it's oh. It's just, it's just going to be like, oh, they changed their seat. That's it. Yeah. That's cool. That's it. But you're not going to talk about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, but they changed, I mean, they changed, because we all know when you, as, as, as guys, we go cut our hairs and we're falling asleep. Yeah. <laughs> right? Unless it's uh... We're kind of, it's like a relaxing, relaxing situation for us guys to go cut our hair. And, and that's why, you know, implementing that little tactic on there made a difference, at least to me and to you. Um, but, you know, a lot of people, see, here's the thing, because going back to your refill example, because um, you were saying that, you know, why don't restaurants have free refills since fast food companies have free refills? And I get it, but it's, it's different economics for, diff for, for, for different ones. But it should be an expectation that you get free refills. In the States, it is. Yeah. Like everywhere like you go, everywhere you go, yeah, it's different. You go. So, and that's a, it's a, that's like a, like a, I would, I would say it's like an easy idea to implement, yeah. because it's, it's, you know, it's, it should be common. It's, 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 it has no, you know, no real reason as to why not do it, when people yeah, expect that, it so much. That's what I, but not in Mexico. Yeah, not in Mexico. That's the norm in Mexico. It's the norm to pay twenty pesos for. A, one can of coke or whatever soda but it's 20 pesos that's like three times it's worth here in mexico so i don't know i i i, I was very like um stubborn i was very stubborn with you asking you but why don't they do it i mean it, it, it do, won't they make more money that way or will they lose money or you know what's the deal why don't they do it if like everyone in the states does it why don't they do it here yeah. It's just, it's, it's something that I wish I could change about Mexico. It's, I mean, you spend so much money on, on soda, it's crazy. It's super, it's crazy. I, I, <laughs> and when you buy a, a, a soda at, at a Carl's Jr. or something like that, even though it's like 45 pesos, which is like the cost of a little bit more than two cans, you don't care and you drink all the freaking soda and you go for a refill and sometimes you don't drink the refill. You don't even touch the refill. But it doesn't hurt you in your wallet the way that two, yeah. two other cooks do. And you're talking about if me and my wife and daughter go to Carl's Jr., we're going to spend like, what, like 80-something pesos on sodas? That's it's ridiculous. Same, it's, it's, ridiculous. <laughs> it's, uh, no, I mean, in, in the Carl's Jr. And it's the same thing, but we get all the soda we want. Yeah. But if we go to a restaurant, you know, each one gets one can, and my I maybe get two, and it's the same price. And it's it's just I don't know, it's ridiculous to me. Well, for that example, I mean, if if I were a uh, see, there's various reasons. One of you know the 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 enemy of of there's two enemies for innovation. One is experts, and the other one is group thinking. So usually expertise you can in this is an example of both expertise you can frame it as. They think that's the way it should be done, and it's always been done. Therefore, they don't, you know, they don't, they don't change it, <laughs> right? Then there's the other factor, which is the one I told you about. Pe usually, people when they want to decide as to do something different, they base it on what they're, they're going to lose, not what they're going to gain. <laughs> so if they if they if, if these people or the restaurant owners here in Mexico, even though they know that in the United States they do it, they, they do free refills. For them, it's like, but what am I going to lose if I do that? They're, they're going to come up with excuses, like, oh, it's because it's probably cheaper over there than over here. Well, tell me, what are you going to lose? Do you think, I don't know if, if our audience, our 10 audiences members, <laughs> are interested in this fact, but I was thinking when we were talking about this earlier, what if we went to like five restaurants and asked that question? I mean, do you think that they, they would give us those numbers, like... No. How much you sell of uh, canned Coke a day? Like they're not gonna tell us. You think they won't? Um, they're not gonna tell us unless we give them a reason as to why they should tell us. Because I really want to know that fact. I, I was thinking right now, my cousin who has this restaurant, he doesn't do the free refills because I mean it's not expected, but he does do one thing different. It's uh, it's called a uh, bull. 
I, I don't I don't even know if I'm saying it right. I just say bull, B U L L. I think it's bull. I don't know why, but it's uh like it's, it's this really big um kind of like cup, like the Holy Grail, and you can order coke in a in a like a, like a, a bull. You can order coke in a bull, and it's uh I think it's like thirty two pesos, which is cheaper than two cans of coke. I don't know if it's more than two cans of coke or not. And if you order the well, the normal uh, Coke, it's like I, I think it's eighteen pesos or something like that. Mm-hmm. So most of the people who order the bull, it's not even on the menu, by the way. So only if you know the place and you've been going there, you can order that. But if you order that, most of the people won't finish it. It's it's too much, and it's uh, I think I'd rather order that and pay like thirty something pesos mm-hmm. than to, like order and order and order Cokes, like canned Coke. I think it's 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 less expensive. And it also looks cool because it's like a big cup. Mm-hmm. Well, see, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is a lot of people are not, fo- they're focused on making money. They're not focused on, you know, resetting people's expectations. <laughs> that's, but, I mean, that's the, the fact. <laughs> but the thing that stresses me out the most is that, uh, again, with my cousin, uh, it, was a, it was a big brewery. In, in, in Mexico, in all of Mexico. I, th- I don't know if they have it in, in, in the States too, but um, they, they, I don't know what happened or how, but my, my cousin ended up asking them how many uh, new restaurants did, op- or did they open up in, the, in, in Tijuana last year. And they have the facts because they give beer to a lot of people. So they told him like 120 restaurants opened up last year. Mm-hmm. And he asked them how many of those are still open. <laughs> and the guy was like, uh, tw- 10 probably? 10, 15, 13 probably? So, I mean, if it's about making money and doing it the way the, that other people do, that's, the proof is right there. You're going to close your restaurant in a year yeah. if you do but, it the but, way that other people do but it. But they still keep on doing it. Why? Because it's hurting. People move in herds. It's group thinking. That's what I'm saying. It's like the, the those lending keep, things keep, that kill themselves. People, listen. Competition is like, is like entering tunnel vision. It's like you're in a perpetual, uh, you're running on a perpetual cycle. You know, and the 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 effect of running, and seeing others running in the same way, same direction, makes you think, that if you run faster, <laughs> you will win the race see but when we really talk about differentiation innovation it means escaping that mentality for me it's like that's mediocrity i would stop running and why the fuck is everyone running that way what are we running towards exactly (laughs) what happens if i go back that way i mean there's like a lot of questions that i would ask myself to not run with everyone. I mean, why? Why question everything? That's why. That's why I teach my daughter. Question everything. You gotta question everything. And and, and it's really. I mean, if it's, it's it's like I told you the other day. If if you got a you have a guy, whose job is to sell product, and he does a really good job at it, and you hire him, to help you sell your product. But you don't listen to him. You. you not, not even that. You don't even hire him because you didn't understand what he was saying when he explained it to you. Uh-huh. I mean, <laughs> I told this guy, it's really easy. You want to sell product? This guy sells product and sells a ton of it. Hire him and he will sell your product. It's as simple as that. He didn't do it. He told me it's not as simple as that. <laughs> but I mean, this guy can show you numbers of what he sells and how many he sells monthly and all this stuff. And obviously, this guy is not selling a lot of, of product. So, I mean, sometimes it's really like crystal clear or it's simple and we just complicate everything. That's, that's it's the same thing to... as human nature. But I, <laughs> the, enemy, the enemy of... of we got to evolve more. Of any... No. It's, it's just people are insecure. That's, that's the bottom line. That's it, insecurity. That's, it's, in what sense? Like, why would someone not open a, a, a new restaurant, an innovative restaurant. A, a restaurant because they got and, something to lose if they do it on their own. What? Money? Money, reputation. Reputation is the, is the biggest one because nobody wants to be considered a failure. In Mexico, 
Failing is considered like like losing, like you're a loser for life. Yeah, but like in in organizations, people who work in organizations, the reasons they don't take risk is because you know they don't want to lose their job. They don't want to, you know, because if they lose that job, they're probably not gonna get another job. Nobody hires fi- failures supposedly, right? But you know, innovation is all about failing. <laughs> but or I'm going back to my cousin. Okay, the, here's the here's the thing. In in Tijuana, there's like probably seven, eight five, six restaurants that have been open for years and years, 10, 20, 30 years that everyone knows. And most of the other restaurants, they just close up. So that's why I like reference my cousin a lot because his father opened it and he's the one like taking care of it right now. So he, he I don't think he's a failure, but he did close down one restaurant that he opened. I think you went there, the, the fish yeah. tacos. Yeah. And a lot of people were like that. They were like, oh, he's a failure. He's a failure. He failed, blah, 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 blah. But when I, I asked him about it, hey, what happened? Why did you close it down? And he told me it was one of the most expensive um, teachings or ed- kind of education that I could ever, lessons that I could ever have learned. It, it, it made me learn a lot, but it cost me a lot. It's not a failure. It's a lesson for me. It's an experience and it's a lesson for me. But yeah, a lot of people were saying, oh, he failed, he failed, oh, he was done, because that's he how failed, people he feel. failed, but he didn't fail. Because yeah. of that, because of that lesson he learned, his main restaurant grew even more because he implemented yeah. all those things all stuff that, that he learned. He, he didn't want to do, he yeah. learned not to do. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, that, to, uh, for me, my cousin is a success, successful guy. If you want success, I mean, this guy in restaurants, He's been keeping up this restaurant for like 20 something years plus like what uh, some other 13 years that his father did it. And, uh, and the mindset that he has is the one that you have and I have because I, I mean, I've, I've learned it from you. I learned from him and I'm, I study people to see how they think and what they think and, and what they how they do what they do. And yeah, his mindset is not he once told me, do you think I just sit here? And wait for people to start doing things and I and, and for me to copy them? No, that's not my job. My job is to sit here and think of how I can make all this better. Yeah. How I can make the restaurant better. I don't care what the other guys are doing. I don't give a shit about it. Because I'm worried about my business and how to make it better. The only and, thing you should learn from competition is what not to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. They did it and it didn't work. That's it. And my, my grandfather, I just told you, my grandfather used to tell me, I, I once asked him, how did you deal with, that was like 13 years ago, 14 years ago, how do you deal with um, with your competition? And he told me, I don't have any competition. I was like, of course you do. You have like, there's like a lot of seafood restaurants. And he told me, no, I am the competition. They have to look out for me. They have to worry about me. And at that point, time I didn't get it because my mind was very 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 close but now I do get it I mean he he's doing the same thing that my cousin is doing he's how to make things better in my restaurant and well they they're gonna cut and the craziest thing if you go right now pick any seafood restaurant in Tijuana and go there they're gonna have something that La Costa used to have mm. either it's a little fish either it's the the, the gamesa cookies and or I don't know, but they they always have something that the La Costa used to have, and I mean that's those are like a very precise uh, stories about successful people and how they think. They don't they they don't think mediocrity. You know the the you know okayness is the enemy of greatness. Yeah, and. To be great, you have to understand what doesn't take you to greatness, and that's that's part of defining your your you know your strategy. That's part of your failures too. Exactly. So I mean, do you ra- would you rather fail doing the same thing as everybody does, or you would you rather fail learning something that you are coming up with, and you have those insights, right? Dude, that's what the the Jim Carrey says in, in one of his, his motivational speeches. Did you hear that one? I probably did. The, about his father. And he said his father was, uh, was he could have been a great comedian, his father. 
So he but didn't want to fail. Yeah, he didn't want to fail. So he, he got a, a secure job. And after a few years, he got fired. And after that, they did anything they could to survive to eat. Yeah. And Jim Carrey goes on to say, if you're going to, if you can fail at anything, nothing's, a, you, do, you can't have a secure job. If you can fail at anything, why not fail at doing something you love instead exactly. of something you don't? Exactly. And that changed my life forever. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's various ways to uh, deliberately deliberately create, you know, differentiation. Now, differentiation has to matter. I mean, there's there's no point in being, having a, dis, you know, aka disrupted idea if it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, really, I mean, just for the hell, just, just, just to be disrupted for the hell of it that has no, has no, absolutely no focus. But there is, there is, you know, you have to understand your, your, you know, create your game. Uh, People have been asking me, you know, because I have a blog called Game Changer, and it literally it's, it's all about this stuff. And one question is, you know, how do you change the game? <laughs> and I think I told you this before. Is you know, okay, so I'm giving you an example. You know, the I mean, let's play, you know, the game playing chicken, which is basically when you put two cars at one end and they gotta go, you know, head on and see who 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 works first. Who chickens out? Yeah. Who chickens out? Yeah. Who chickens out first? Yeah. Okay, so the way you change the game in that situation, in many situations, well, actually in all situations, is make the other driver see when you take off the steering wheel. The steering wheel. Why? Because you are telling him, I'm committed That's to, a brilliant to, example. to not swerving, right? Yeah, I'm not going to move. And you're seeing it. I'm, exactly. I, I can't. I'm not able I'm not, to move. I'm not going to move, fucker. Yeah. All right? You won't force you won't force me to put it back on, right? And that's you throw it out the window. You, so so the point here is that you you have to be committed to something. <laughs> if you are not committed, <laughs> you are just playing. You're just bullshitting. So anytime somebody tells you, "No, we're this and we're that. This is why we're different," asking that type of question, what are you really committed to? What are you willing to to base your arguments on? What are you willing to defend? Right? Most. Most will come up with the same conclusions as everybody else. Actually, this past weekend, I was with a client who, where we're applying these types of ideas. And, you know, I went back to the question. So really, what makes you different? They cannot tell me in really, really concrete terms. <laughs> because they don't, they don't have, I mean, they've been doing the same thing over and over again for who, how many, I don't know how many years, like 10 years or so. And to them, that's kind of normal. To them, the different is, is like a little increment <laughs> somewhere. And I said, no, that is not different. That's just playing a game with all the other guys. Because once somebody else finds out that you're able to do that, the other guy's going to copy you. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's easy. Difference is something that's difficult for somebody else to do. Because you only, only you can do it. Because you're committed to doing that. Right? Um, so, I mean, it's, it's really, really... I mean, that, it comes down to really that. What are you willing to, to commit to? Um, what argument are, can you, can you, only can you win, right? Um, you know, there's another strategy that I used, um, which is, is, which is um, eat the bug. <laughs> I love how you name your strategies. Yeah. <laughs> so what it means is it goes kind of like with, with what I was saying about, you know, you know, committing to something. Basically, what are you willing to do that the other guys are not? And that's usually something that, because um, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, okay, so for example, the, the one we were talking about, you know, because I like giving, giving ideas away. I don't mm -hmm. have an issue with it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people think that because I give away ideas away, that I am, um, you know, eliminating myself from potential clients. <laughs> Because then they'll take it and they'll do it. I'm like, no, because the ideas that I come up with are so fucking crazy that only I would do them. Yeah. <laughs> right? And th that's a, a, a concern that I've... Um, I have a few friends and I met a lot of people who have that concern. That's one of the biggest concerns is if I tell them my strategy or my ideas, they can just like do, do them without me. Yeah. But then I remember what you say and I'm like... Ah. 
I, I've been giving away a, a ideas for about a year now, maybe two years now, and no one, no one has done them. I mean, and, and that's a good example. When something's really, really difficult, people will not do them. I mean, it doesn't matter of fact or because weird or it, strange. because it ch it challenges them, right? <laughs> so that's you know that's not an example of eating the bug, but it's an example of you know I'm willing to give ideas away when others are not. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's eating the bug. They're not. They're not. They're not committed to doing that. They're not willing to do that because they fear all this and that. Well, as for me, it's like it's normal conversation. <laughs> It's yeah. a normal conversation. Um, other other strategies, one and the big equalizer is speed. <laughs> um, if you can move faster than somebody else, you will always have an advantage. It's <laughs> um, actually called. Um, this is this has to do with uh, dock fighting. So this guy John Boyd came up with a with a with an idea called the Uda Loop. Which basically in dock fighting, if you guys understand what dock fighting is, is uh, basically you know fighting with planes. And back in the day, you know when jets weren't as fast as today and as advanced as today, you actually had dock fights <laughs> where you were pursuing another another fighter and you know shooting and all this. So to do that, you have to be very you know very very fast with your mind because you don't have a lot of time to think about you know what's going to happen, what you do. You're literally anticipating or reacting. So the way you, you do this, you try to put yourself in the in your enemy's head, and that all has to do with speed. You're outthinking them. So when you talk about speed in business, it's about outthinking others, <laughs> getting to some place first, or or looking forward first, and seeing that before somebody else does, and then doing everything in your power possible to move as fast as possible to that to that position. So um, it's not about you know so much about implementing processes it's about how you think you know how fast can you can you detect stuff and then react to that um, and that's a big big one um, I'm trying to think of other strategies because I have a bunch of them <laughs> um, god damn man but yeah I mean listen I mean the bottom line is that I mean to be committed to, to, to being different is to be committed to being to innovation and a lot of people are afraid most people are afraid to do new stuff that's the bottom line. That that'll that'll always be your advantage. So yeah. as long as you can come up with new stuff that makes sense for you, other people will not try it. It's all about experimentation. It's all about experimentation. A lot of people yeah. don't get that. I mean, a yeah. lot of people think, "Oh, I'm gonna think differently. I'm gonna do something. It's gonna be a hit." No, it's about experimentation. It's, it's yeah. about seeing what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. And that's why I'm so like against people who who put up their let's say video tests. They're testing something and they yeah. put them up on, on YouTube and stuff like that. Testing, blah, blah, blah. It's like, don't put up tests. Just do your test, learn, and then do something really kick ass yeah. because then you're going to flood everyone with stupid tests that no one cares and everyone will think you're stupid. But just don't flood with the test and experiment, oh, experiment, experiment, experiment. That's how you're going to get to things that do work. Experimentation is the, is the safest path, is the only path to innovation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. People look at me weird when I tell them, dude, you gotta experiment in your business. You gotta experiment. You won't I, I can't come here and tell you, you know what, do this, 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 and this, and you're gonna sell more. I can't do that. Because everything's different. And you just I can just tell you things you could experiment with or things that I've read that work, but you still gotta implement it and see if it works for you or not. It's not nothing is sure. But a lot of people in Tijuana, go go and present things to you and tell you, no, this this is sure, this is a sure thing. Uh, pay me blah 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 a month, and I'm gonna raise your uh, your sales. But when that it's, doesn't happen, it's incremental. When that doesn't happen, they they wanna go and hire someone that can make a difference, but they're already tapped out because they spend the money on that, and that's when where we come in and. It's, <laughs> For me, it's been that story for a long time. I tell them something to do, they don't do it, they spend a lot of money, and then they want me to fix the fucking problem. I mean, Without listen, if, if something, if an idea is, is you know, makes you, you know, you are scared shitless, if you do what you're thinking, you're on the right path. <laughs> Where did I hear that? I've because, heard that before. 
because it's 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 very simple. Uh, most businesses compete on increments, and that's the path to mediocrity. <laughs> that's the safest path to me mediocrity. Just doing the same thing a little better, a little better, is is temporary. Ten times better. That's innovation, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> and another thing is that. To be great, you gotta suck at something. <laughs> you were telling me this <laughs> because you del you are deliberately focusing on something with very very with purpose that you are willing to suck at something else. So if, I'm gonna give you an example. Sappos, Sappos sell shoes, or, or yeah, they do. They still still sell shoes, but that's how they started selling shoes. Now they sell pretty much everything, like Amazon. Amazon bought them out like five years or six years ago for a billion dollars. Um, the reason they got bought out is because Sappos is in the business of customer service. They sell shoes, but that, that's not their business. So they are super fucking great at, you know, at, you know, having customer service, yeah. right? But they suck at other shit, <laughs> right? They don't make, I mean, they don't have uh, a specific, because you listen, a lot of things have happened since Sappos where everybody's like making, oh, they should do this, should that, do that, right? But here's the thing, because they've been told that, no, you guys should do your own shoes, because you now you got brand names, so you can sell more. They're like, no, we're going to suck at making shoes. That's the reason we want to be great at customer service. We don't want to be great at making shoes, because if we do that, we're going to lose focus over here, <laughs> right? Let's, let's let the other guys do shoes <laughs> or clothes or whatever, right? So that's... That's an example of, of you know, when you're, when you're committed to being great, you will suck at something. You can't be great at everything. And it's okay. It's fine. Exactly. You can't be great at everything. If you're trying to be great at everything, you will be me mediocre at pretty much everything. Or you'll go crazy. <laughs> you know but you have to suck at something. You have to be willing to. Um, it's really that simple. I mean, what, what, else, what else do we have on here? I'm trying to think of other strategies to tell you. <laughs> There's a lot. I have a lot of them. I don't. I haven't written down somewhere, but um, I usually don't post in my blog because it's like you know, I, I don't like. Uh, I mean, I can give them away. I don't care. But um, people. I mean, not you know, because I've talked about this topic before, and a lot of people don't get it. I mean, they get. They they understand what the topic, but they don't get it. Like, like the strategy I'm talking about. Yeah. I point it out to them, and they're like. You know, it freaks them out. <laughs> it's really, really, it's really, really funny. It freaks them the fuck out. <laughs> like, I mean, it's seriously. Um, you know, what does mi different mean to you? I think it, it, if you just do something different than anyone else, no, I think it's a, a, a variation of something. That's, that, that could be different. Different for me, because I think I'm different than a lot of people, and we're talking about that, how I hate going out to bars. And I mean, that's that's something a lot of people do, like a lot, a lot of people do, and especially here in, in Mexico. And I just despise it. I just hate it. I, I, I was, <laughs> I, was re I was trying to, to get it out of you that why do people think like that? Why do people no. go out to a place where they're gonna get uh, overpriced liquor, they're gonna see like it's, it's gonna be crowded. There's gonna be a uh, loud music. You can't hear the people correctly, and I mean, it's there's like a lot of cons to it, and not any pros for me. And I was trying to get you to tell me why do people think that's cool or that's a good idea? Why you're the spending, habit. you're losing time and money. I was like, uh, it was just driving me crazy. So I'm different because I don't like all that stuff. But I think that's like polar opposites, different. Yeah, but see, the that's more of a a personal liking. <laughs> but a lot of people tell me, "Oh, you're very different. You're very different. You're different. You're different. You're different." They sometimes well, use mean, the weird. Well, I mean, because you don't like it, you're antisocial. That's why. <laughs> yeah. That's why. I mean, but maybe that's. I, I I mean I think the same way, but I'm not antisocial. The reason why is because I like 
number one, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it once or twice, but not all, every fucking day. Certain things. Um, the other one is that I like, I like learning from people. <laughs> so if I'm going to go somewhere and, you know, have an interaction, I'll do it. I don't fucking care. Um, I don't mind. I mean, once a big source of creativity for me is, is experiencing things. Um, you know, even stuff that I don't, you know, I, I've always said that um, if you want to be creative, be a yes guy or a yes girl. Always say yes. A yes man, like the movie Jim Carrey. Yes, uh, do it at least once. It's a nice movie. Do it at least once. If you don't like it, don't do it again. But if, you know, just do it once. That's it. <laughs> just try it. It's the same thing. And that's the attitude. Um, to, me, to me, different means that you are of, of the mindset that you think about that anything has the possibility to be better. That's different. I was going to tell you different could be doing things that the, the mainstream people don't do. Yeah, but you have to have a reason why. Because just, ha just, just simply doing it, nobody gives a shit. You're just going to be weird. <laughs> Or different. Yeah, but, but nobody's going to care. Yeah, but you're still different. But nobody cares. Yeah, but you're still art. I know, but nobody cares. <laughs> the, the, point, the point is that if Christine Labotin would have designed a red soul and nobody gives a shit, huh? he is not Christine Labotin. No, he's just a guy who makes just to make ugly the fucking, shoes. Exactly. With the red soul. That, that's the point. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> so I think the question here is why did people give a shit? Oh, well that's the that's the that's the interesting one. Because you have to get into their feelings. You might you making people care is an art unto itself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and that's really where, where most ideas fail because nobody gives a damn. I still don't know how to make people care. Some some close uh, friends tell me I'm uh, I'm very manipulative. And, but I, if I am, I don't do it on purpose, but I, I really don't know how to get people to care about my, for example, my movies. I just, uh, another, a mutual friend of ours told me, just talk to people about your film. Every chance you get, talk to people about your film and what you're doing. And that has gotten people to care about my film and offer me money to, for investments and stuff like that. But if I need to replicate that, I have no fucking clue how to do it. There's, I mean, there's, there's various, various ways, and there's also strategy to do this. Um, so there's one point. Number one, 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 there's steps to this thing, but let's, let's think of the first one is um, people have to like you or care about you. That's the first one. So if they don't, if they don't know about you, then you have to, in that, in that space of time that you have to, to, to meet somebody, You have to make them give a damn. Why would people care about me? Well, here, here he goes. <laughs> Let's say that you are going to a bar. I, I always tell people this one. Okay. Let's say you're going to a bar. If you tell somebody what you do and they get what you do, you're already irrelevant. Because anybody can say that. Right? So for me, for example, a lot of, a lot of long, you know, I think it was the, the past... Um, The World Cup. Yeah, the last World Cup. Um, some guy in Ireland, um, he gave me the, 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 the moniker of the innovation insurgent. So when I came back, because I was off, off on vacation that time, and I came back to see my Twitter, it was blowing up with innovation insurgent, this and this, all that stuff. I was like, what the, f the hell ha happened, right? So I figured out that this guy was the one, because he told me, right? That, I, I figured the source, that's how I got to it. So... I, I, I took that and still use it, right? So when I talk to people, I say, oh, I'm an, an innovation insurgent. What's more catchy, saying that or I'm a consultant or I'm an, <laughs> or I'm an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. right? What's more catchy? <laughs> Which makes you think more like, oh, sh I've never heard that before, right? So that's one angle that you can get somebody to hook, you know, to, give it, to, to get them to hook in. You still, they still don't care, but you got their attention. So that's the first step, getting people to get their attention. The next step is telling them something so they can care. So one way, and there's this book, great book that I read a long time ago called, it's really, 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 really small, called So What? And that's the question you've got to ask yourself. Why? So what? Why should I give a fuck, right? Yeah. So, the so there's a so what statement that he came up with to make people care. So the point here is that I, I need to figure, so 
if I'm not, if I'm just having a com random conversation with you, well, I mean, it's just a random conversation. I don't know anything. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. We're just conversing, right? Yeah. But let's say during that conversation, I pick up something that I like to get from you. I will try to get that information so I can make you my pitch, right? So in the so what statement, there's this, you had to start with, you know how, this is how it starts. You know how, and then you insert the challenge or whatever that da, 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 all these people do or have. And you had to say, yes, that's true. Then you say, well, I help you fix that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Doing this. It's very simple. It's just the framing, right? <laughs> and that's how it works. And I've tried it before and I know it works because I've, I've done it myself. <laughs> it changed everything because I know how to hook you in and then potentially make you care. But just because, but, but, but that's not, the point is not the statement. The point is you figure out that thing that hurts and then put it in a way that they got to say, yes, you're right. They got to get them to agree. <laughs> yeah, it works. And that's where you start your persuasion. The next steps are, you know, not more complex, but there's other steps to the thing. But once you get that to the second step, you're, you're at least getting the conversation going. <laughs> Now there's, there's ways, like if you are, for example, I give talks all the time. Um, my pitches are normally aspirational and that they have the narrative of a challenger. <laughs> so I'm a challenger going to get up against, you know, whatever enemy I define during my talk, right? And I make it a point of saying at the beginning, this is the enemy and this is me. So when I, when I, sorry, when I frame it that way, you know, they know there's, there's going to be a war <laughs> somewhere in there. In some way, I'm going to come up, you know, victorious. Have you recorded any of your talks? Yeah. You have them online? I think so, yeah. I, I, I have a couple of them because they've been, they recorded me. But, <laughs> yeah. But see, that's, that's, there's various ways to get people to give a damn. And it usually has to do with the stories and how you, pl and how you frame them. And there's the, the oppositional one is a good one. The aspirational one is a good one. It usually works because you get down to people's feelings. And that's what you got to touch. You, don't, you, don't, you, you can't get somebody to move by logic. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I failed. Exactly. You got to get to them right there in their heart. Um, in the feels. Yeah. I mean, in... in, 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 in you know, unfortunately, most of the time, the people we want we want to persuade, we never met them before, right? So it's different. Like for example, if you have a a a team challenge, right, and you want your team to you know motivate your team, so I got the perfect strategy for you. It's the tell me your muse dynamic. Why? Because if I ask you, Adrian. Tell me five people, dead or alive, fictional or real, from which you get inspired. Okay, and tell me why. You do that, and then I tell you my five, then we start getting to a, to a very deep conversation because I'm gonna start understanding what your true motivations are. And the next time I, I ask you to do something or I, I persuade you to do, what, to do something for me, <laughs> I will. I can go back to that hot button of why you want to do that, and I can push that button mm -hmm. to get you to move, right? But that's when you have contact with people, right? And it works because people will not back down from that. They're 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 being truthful. They're telling you their secrets, right? They can't say, "Oh no, I was I was I was bullshitting." And they can't say that. They already told you, and you you opened up yourself, right? So there's. You know, that's how you get people Connection. to move. That's how you make people to move. But in a situation where people don't know you, like giving a talk, you got to begin with some showmanship. <laughs> with some, you got to put a card out there that'll shock people. So one of the things that I do to shock people is, you know, who here considers himself mediocre? So I ask like a shocking question or make a shocking statement to get people's attention. And then I'll, that usually becomes the, the beginning I'll frame it as the beginning of the conversation. What, what, what's going to happen next? <laughs> but 
but I get your attention because nobody acts that way. <laughs> yeah. Right? But I mean, that's that's kind of that's kind of how it goes. But I mean, the, the bottom line is that we can come up with all the freaking ideas we want, but at the end of the day, we got to get people to care. Yeah. And if people don't give a damn, then <laughs> we're fucked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. But <laughs> it's really as simple as that. And and usually people think about that too. That's that's one of the reasons most people will not innovate because it's easier to copy what's already been done. What already works. Exactly. And they never take the time to, you know, be critical about those ideas and in in you know and um, you know take them apart and find the weaknesses weaknesses because to them it's like they just see the idea oh that works let's fucking sell that shit too. It's all working for them. Let's put it on another another price. Let's reduce the price a little bit so people will come in and buy from us. And that's usually mediocre. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> there's no innovation to be had there. And there's literally nothing to nothing nothing of use there. Now there's another question here, and this is the question that, that ki kills everybody. This is when you're truly diff different. And this is the question people should ask themselves before they try to be anything. Um, and I always ask ask people this. If you disappear tomorrow, who's going to give a shit and why? Most people cannot answer that. They're going to say, oh, yeah, my mom. Yeah, your mom's supposed to care. But tell me, people outside, you know, people cannot come up with a serious fucking answer. Neither can businesses. Ask a business owner, if you your business disappears tomorrow, of your clients, who's going to give a damn? <laughs> that makes sense. That's when you're truly different. Yeah. These kills people will miss you. Yeah. If, and, if and Apple disappears. Yeah. Be like, what? What the world. The do? world's gonna go. You know, on war. <laughs> Imagine if Disney disappeared. Oh my God! A lot of people. A lot of kids' dreams are gonna be broken. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But that's the question. You know. Start from there. Start that question. Okay. If if I had Rampe and disappeared tomorrow. Who cared? <laughs> right. Or, or ask the other question, what would I like people to care about, about me? And that usually gives you a north. <laughs> yeah. That gives you a north. It does. It's very simple, but it's very hard. Because then you got to commit to that. <laughs> but if, uh, I mean, if it's really your passion, it's not hard to commit no. to. No, you do it every day. Because you're going to do it it's anyway. It's, it's, it's every it's, fucking day. It's something you enjoy. 24-7 and... You know, it's, it's like a superhero. You're, you're living in like a superhero. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's really simple, but the, question, the other question is, you know, if, if, you, if you have to get up every day because the alarm sounded, <laughs> you've got nothing, nothing to live for. <laughs> you're just going through a routine. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but if you wake up every day by yourself because <laughs> you got to do some shit. <laughs> or you want to do some shit. Yeah. You know, a long time ago when I, 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 uh, I got a, uh, a public speaking, or not, a, he's not a public speaker, he's a well-known guy here, but he, he, he speaks very well, right? His job requires it. So I hired him for public speaking, you know, to teach me some stuff. And I said, listen, I don't have any problems standing in front of people. What I need, you know, work with is controlling my passion. <laughs> Because it works, but some people are overwhelmed with it. So I want you to help me to structure it in a way that has more, more impact to, en to any, any type of person. And he was like, God damn, well, well let, let me see that, right? So he had me make, a, uh, make, make he had us make a poem, a poem, and I wrote a poem about the devil. The poem was very simple. It's in Spanish, but let me try to think of how to, how to translate it. Basically, it says that, you know, When, when, Say it in Spanish because yeah. that adds dramatic to it. Dramatic feel. <laughs> Then translate it. No, I'm going to say it in English. <laughs> when you wake up, the devil has to say, shit, they're up. What does that mean? That the reason that you're up is somebody, somebody who's trying to be mediocre is going to have a hard day. Because <laughs> somebody's You know, stepping on their toes. Somebody's challenging them. And that's the point. You want to be that person 
that the mediocre, mediocre people say, holy shit. <laughs> he's a, he's an obstacle. Exactly. He makes us. He's gonna so he's gonna he's gonna make us disappear. He's gonna make my life hard. Exactly. You wanna be that person, and when whenever you can be that person, you will stick out like a sore thumb, <laughs> right? <laughs> But it's, it's it's really that simple. And I remember because when I wrote that poem, he was like, "This guy's insane. This I've never heard something like that." He's like, "You were you were literally say that in person." I said, "Yeah, I've actually done it." Not in a poem wise, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, have you told me that before? But see, that's the point. That's the way you stand out. And I know for a fact, anytime I go and give a talk, people are going to be like, I, I, I've listened to this, maybe to something similar like this before, but I've never heard it this way. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's, that's what you want to do. You want to stand for an idea. Um, I think I think that's a good way to conclude this. I mean, yeah. you have to stand for an idea. Um, there's a there's a uh, you know remember the the movie Beef for Vendetta. I remember, but I didn't see you, it. You, you didn't see it? No. Shit. Well, there's a scene where B, the guy, he picks up one guy because he's literally a, a like a revolutionary, right? So he's an obstacle to the other guys. He's a pain in the ass, <laughs> and they're trying to kill him, and they say, "I thought you were dead," and and this guy says. Ideas are bulletproof. Some ideas are bulletproof. So you want to make your idea bulletproof. <laughs> you make it, you, the way you make an idea bulletproof is you, you, it has to stand for something. And that's how you get people to give a shit. <laughs> that's why Anonymous uses that mask. The, what's it called? Guy Fox. Exactly. Yeah. Masks. Because Guy Fox masks. You, the idea will always be there. Exactly. You can destroy it. It stands the test of time. And that's the type of things that you want to... You know, be associated with, because you will never be boring, <laughs> and then you have an ample ground to inno to innovate on that. Make your life mean something. Yeah. More than to your loved ones. People people don't buy what you do. They pe people buy why you do it. <laughs> yeah, true. So that's how you find your 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 ice, your patch of ice that only you can play with or in. <laughs> And if other people stand in it, they can't. They can't. They can't do anything because they don't stand for it. <laughs> they will be challenged. Ya no tardan llegar y ya y se va. Entonces ya. Van a interrumpir de seguro. But anyway, so I think so. Adrian, are you? Do you feel like you have enough information now? Enough insight? I have. You have answered some of my questions, but you've only raised more questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess we'll have to do another one then <laughs> at some point. No, no, no. I mean, this is this isn't like therapy, like consulting. This this podcast isn't about consulting. We did this today because it's something that's been on our minds, and we talked about it. But we're not gonna turn this into consult Jorge's consulting <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but well, let's see if we can uh, figure out another way to make it more practical. Yeah, <laughs> maybe like a ten minute segment yeah. or something like that. Yeah. All right. Well. Guys, let us know if you have any questions about this topic or anything else. Um, you know, if you have ideas on how to be different, I like to hear those. I actually collect those. <laughs> In a jar. Strategies and whatnot. I like collecting those. Um, if you like to brainstorm them, even better because I like actually like brainstorming those. Um, but uh, I'll, we'll see you next week. Next week, what are we talking about next week? Oh, we're talking about artificial intelligence, the ethics of artificial intelligence. So it'll be a, we're actually having a a guest on board so it'll be interesting all right well talk to you soon guys bye bye